This is the beginner's guide to Adobe Firefly. In this video, I will show you how to use Firefly primarily to create images, but we'll delve into other aspects of Firefly as well, including things like creative boards that they have in Firefly. This is going to be fun. Let's get started. And Adobe Firefly is Adobe's flagship AI tool. You'll find aspects or elements of Firefly in many other Adobe products. But if you go directly to firefly.adobe.com and sign in with your Adobe account, there are several powerful things you can do just right inside Adobe Firefly. And they have paid accounts and they also have free options. But just get signed in and you can start using this powerful AI tool. In this video, let's focus right in specifically on how to generate AI images. And you can do that in a couple of different ways. You could go to create, you could go to generate. In either case, you should see this dialog box here that says choose a model and decide what you want to generate. So if I click here on image, notice that there's an option for video, but this feature is currently not available for education and there are other limitations on it as well. So I'm gonna stick to image and then here where it says Firefly image five preview, I get a pop-up and it shows me all of the available Adobe models. The ones with this little purple crown are pretty much restricted to certain paid accounts. So you may need to click and switch to a model that does doesn't have that crown. And I'll show you that in just a minute. Next to the model selection area, there is an option to change the aspect ratio of the image I'm about to produce. If I click there, I can change it to uh, maybe 16 by 9, which would be widescreen, or I could have it formatted for a cell phone. But I love that you can now choose the aspect ratio and the layout basically of the image before you generate it. I'm gonna to change to 16 by nine. Now we also have a button for more. And if you click on that, Firefly takes you to a screen with the options that you've already selected and with the opportunity to upload a reference image. I'll show you an example of this in just a minute. But for now, I'm gonna go down here to the prompt and describe the image I want. I want an image of a dragon, and the dragon is headed toward a young man with a bow and arrow. And I'll add a few other details here. Maybe there's a castle in the background. Now, in addition to describing what the image shows, I could also describe the style of the image. Is this artwork? Is it a photograph? In this case, I want it to be fantasy artwork. So I'm going to add that in my case at the very beginning. So fantasy artwork image of a dragon. Now watch what happens when I click generate. Because I have this latest model of Firefly selected, it's saying I don't have access to this. So that's why I say you may need to click and switch to a model that you do have access to. So let's try that again. And before I click this, notice that it also uses one credit. So remember that, and I'll show you where you can check the amount of credits you have left. So I'll click Generate, and Firefly gives me four excellent images to choose from. I can click on any of those images to get a bigger view of it. A lot of this looks great. I love the look of this. But there are some strange little aspects of this image, like this bow here. I don't really understand what's happening there. It's not clear to me what this is all about here at the lower right. So I'm going to go up to the top here and click Generate to get back. And I could choose a different option. And in most cases, you're not going to get a perfect result. There will be some strange elements of the image that you wish were a little different. And as time goes on, I'm sure that Firefly will only get better at generating the images the way we would want it to. Now let's say I'm pretty happy with the results, but I want to try something a little different with it. I could certainly adjust the prompt down here at the bottom of Firefly. I could add more detail. I can also go here to the left. Notice that this panel has changed. Firefly understood me when I said fantasy art, and so it decided that this is art and not a photo. But if I change my mind, I can switch it to be a photo. I could also adjust the visual intensity. It's already pretty intense if you look at these images, but I could make it even more intense or much less visually intense. I think I will make it slightly more intense. Another thing I could try is uploading a composition reference. And there are some examples here. 
And this is talking about the composition of the image, not the style, but just how it's composed. So I'm going to upload an example here. I'm going to click add image. I'll upload from my device and I'm going to select this image here of a cute dragon in front of a house and the dragon has its wings stretched out. I'm going to select that, click open, and now that will be the composition reference for the images that are generated for me. Let's give this a try. I'll click generate and again it uses one credit. I can go up here in the upper right and click on my account and here I can see that I have still 248 credits remaining. This number resets each month. Okay, let's look at the results. Firefly is still giving me the dragon, as well as the young man, the bow, the castle, but the dragon is now composed kind of similarly to the reference image. Now, for some reason, in this last example, Firefly not only mimicked the composition, but a little bit of the style as well of the dragon. I'm going to remove that as the composition reference, and instead, I'm now going to upload it as the style reference. And again, they do have some samples that you can choose, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to add from my device that same image of a cute dragon and let's click generate. So now the composition of my images varies quite a bit from image to image, but the style in each case is kind of cute, kind of cartoonish, less scary, I guess. So those are some examples of how composition reference images and style reference images can be useful. In addition to those, we do have effects. So I can choose a specific art effect, and there are drop downs that I can use to choose as well. I can change the lighting. I could choose specific materials that I want the image to be made of. For example, layered paper or marble. Now, one of the newer features in Firefly is as you try different options and settings and prompts, your past work is saved. And I love this because it gives me the opportunity to try a bunch of things, but to at any point go back and choose my favorite option. And I think this is my favorite. If I put my mouse on the image, here in the upper right, I can choose to download a copy of this image to my computer, and now I can click to open it up, or I can go to my downloads folder to open it up, and this image is now on my computer. It no longer relies on Firefly. It's just an independent image that I can upload to my own website or blog or to social media. I could put it in a presentation or in an online course, or whatever it is that I need to use this image in. I'm going to X out of that, because there are other options I have for this image. Now, if I click on the image, if I've upgraded to a paid version of Adobe Firefly, and probably not an education version, then I can use AI prompts to make edits to the image. So I could say, replace the bow with a sword, and it should do that. Going back to my generate history, there are other things I can do in addition to downloading or editing if I've paid for the upgrade. I could click here to open this image in Photoshop Web. And Adobe Firefly and Adobe Photoshop Web are connected online. So is Adobe Express, as well as other Adobe products. Now that my image is in Adobe Photoshop on the web, I can select various elements of the image. So I'm gonna do lasso, and I'm gonna click and drag to select the bow that I'm not super happy with. And I get a toolbar that appears, and I'm gonna choose generative fill, and I'll type in sword. I'll click fill and let's see what happens. Photoshop web has done a great job using the AI to replace the bow and arrow with a sword. I actually like this quite a bit better. It's actually given me three options to choose from and I can click through those to pick my favorite. So I could continue to lasso different elements of this image to select them and then I could replace them with something else or simply remove them. Once I've cleaned up the image the way I want it to be, I can click download, download on computer, and it will put a copy of my edited image on my computer. So I love this, that Adobe Firefly is just naturally connected to Photoshop Web and also to Adobe Express. 
Adobe Express is an easier, more simplified version of Photoshop and also other Adobe tools. So if I want to use this image in Adobe Express, I can just click here on Share Options, Open in Express. There's my image now in Adobe Express, and I can use this Remove Background tool or Insert Object or Remove Object to make similar edits to what I showed in Photoshop Web. Jumping back to Firefly, I'm going to now click on the Firefly symbol in the upper left corner just to get back to the Firefly homepage. So at this point, I've taught you pretty much everything you need to know about creating images, generating them, really, by using Adobe Firefly AI. Now, firefly.adobe.com is constantly being updated and changed. If you're watching this video even a month from now, the look and feel of this website may have changed, but the core functionality is going to be pretty similar. Having said that, Adobe just keeps adding more features and options. And as time goes on, they keep linking it to more and more other Adobe tools. And there are so many options here. If this video proves to be popular, I may make a complete course on Adobe Firefly. If you're interested in that, please leave a comment below the video. But for now, the last thing I want to point out is that if you go to the Create section of Adobe Firefly, there is now an option for you to create a board in Adobe Firefly. And what this is, is it's kind of like a workspace for you for one particular project. Instead of just generating random images, one after another after another, that are not really connected to a specific project, you can go to an Adobe Firefly board and name it after your project, and then you can start uploading images. I'm going to load one up that I used a few weeks ago. What I did is I uploaded my existing channel artwork, logo, or whatever you want to call it, and then I used the Firefly board to generate similar images and, you know, to look at other options that I might use. One way to do that is to select an image and choose Vary. I want more like this. It's going to use four of my credits, but that's okay. And then I'll click where I want those images to be located. And Firefly is producing additional images similar to this one. I'm going to click Collect Items. And I can drag any of those items out if I want to. I can edit them, make them bigger. Another thing I can do is select an image and choose to convert it to other things. Now that's a premium feature for right now. But there's so much we can do with these Firefly boards. And they're saved right there in your Firefly account. It is a good idea to name them. So there's so much we can do in Adobe Firefly. But for now, I think I'll end this video. If you're interested, I would love to make more Firefly videos. But for now, I hope you found this video to be helpful. If you did, please like, follow, and subscribe. And when you do, click the bell and you'll be notified when I post another video. If you'd like to support my channel, the best way to do that is to become a channel member, but you could also click the thanks button below the video. You could support me through my Patreon account or by buying channel merch, and you'll see more information about those options in the description below the video.